Welcome to the timeline where Canada said no to the United States. Welcome to the era of the Canadian Gripen. Today on Airdom, we are stripping away the marketing brochures and political lobbying. We are going to analyze the sheer lethality, the logistical brilliance, and the geopolitical shockwaves. This is an engineering deep dive into the road, not taken. To understand why this aircraft would have been revolutionary, we must look at the physics of the Arctic. The High North is an environment that punishes complexity with ruthless efficiency. The Gripen E was designed under the existential threat of a total invasion of Sweden. Its DNA is built on the BAS 90 doctrine. In our scenario, Canadian Gripens are dispersed across the vast, frozen highways of the Yukon and the Northwest Territories. They are operating out of converted barns and camouflage netting. Analyze the logistics footprint. The F-35 typically requires a massive support tail. The Gripen E requires one technician and five conscripts. In the brutal cold of a Canadian winter, this difference is not just a statistic. It is the difference between a jet that flies and a jet that is grounded. While the enemy is celebrating the destruction of a runway in Cold Lake, a squadron of Gripens is taking off from a highway 50 kilometers away. Fully loaded with Meteor Beyond Visual Range air-to-air -air missiles. This is an engineering deep dive into the road not taken and the terrifying capabilities it would have unleashed in the high north. The terrifying capabilities it would have unleashed in the high north. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Airdom for more strategic insights. Let us speak to the lethality of that specific loadout. The integration of the MBDA Meteor missile on the Gripen E creates a kinetic capability that outclasses current American loadouts. The Meteor utilizes a ramjet engine, allowing it to throttle its speed and conserve energy, only to accelerate significantly in the terminal phase. This gives it a no-escape zone significantly larger than traditional solid rocket motor missiles. In our simulation, a Canadian Gripen pilot, leveraging passive infrared search and track sensors, can launch a meteor at a target over 100 kilometers away without ever turning on their own radar, effectively engaging in a silent kill. But the true strategic divergence in this scenario lies in the electronic warfare suite. The Gripen E carries an internal electronic warfare system that is widely considered one of the most aggressive in the world. Unlike the stealth philosophy of the United States, which relies on airframe geometry, the Swedish philosophy relies on digital active camouflage. The aircraft utilizes gallium nitride antenna technology to blast noise, jamming signals, and false targets into enemy radar scopes. In our analysis, a flight of four Canadian Gripens patrolling the Arctic Circle does not just hide, they actively ma To an opposing S-400 missile battery, these four jets might appear as 40 targets. This capability allows Canada to project force into contested airspace without relying on the stealth maintenance burden. That can cripple sortie generation rates in extreme climates. However, Superior engineering does not matter if your ally forbids you from using it. The biggest threat to this Canadian Gripen fleet in our simulation was not Russian missiles. It was American lawyers. While the Gripen dominates the physics of the Arctic, the F-35 dominates the politics of Washington. And here is the brutal reality our simulation must confront. 
The F-35 is not just a plane, it is a subscription service. It is a flying iPhone where the Pentagon owns the Apple ID. The mission data files, the threat libraries that tell the pilot who to shoot and what is a friend, are compiled in United States laboratories. If Canada flies the F-35, they fly on a digital leash. If diplomatic relations sour or if American... The strategic implications are clear. True independence in defense requires more than just advanced hardware. By choosing the Gripen E, Canada cuts that leash. The Swedish offer was unprecedented. It included full transfer of the source code. This is the holy grail of sovereignty. It means Canadian engineers could rewrit the radar algorithms, integrate non-NATO weapons, and update threat libraries. With In this timeline, NORAD stops being a relationship of master and client and finally becomes a partnership of equals. The United States holds the keys to the digital architecture of the F-35, but with the Gripen, Canada holds its own keys. In our scenario, this independence leads to a renaissance of the Canadian aerospace industry. The deal stipulated that the aircraft would be assembled in Canada. We would see the resurrection of factories, reminiscent of the Avro Aero era. Canadian industry would not just be manufacturing parts, they would be building the nervous system of the aircraft. This creates a domestic supply chain immune to the whims of United States export controls. If a war breaks out and borders are closed, Canada can still build, repair, and upgrade its own fighter fleet. There's a level of strategic resilience that is impossible to put a price tag on. Let us push the simulation further into the future. It is the year 2030. The Arctic ice has melted significantly, opening the Northwest Passage to commercial and military traffic. The United States Navy is stretched thin in the Pacific. In this timeline, Canada is not begging for American air cover. The Royal Canadian Air Force is operating a... This northern alliance between Canada and Sweden creates a third pole of power in the West. It demonstrates to nations like Finland, Germany, and the United Kingdom that there is a viable alternative to total reliance on... The interoperability argument, often used to force nations into buying American equipment, is proven false in this scenario. The Gripen is fully NATO compatible. It uses Link 16 data links. It talks to American ships and planes perfectly. The only difference is that the Americans cannot turn it off. From a pilot's perspective, the cockpit of the Gripen E offers a tactical advantage that is often overlooked, the wide area display and human machine fusion. In the chaotic airspace of a potential Arctic conflict, where reaction times are measured in seconds, this... Today, we delve into a critical aspect of modern defense, economic warfare. The Gripen E's operating cost is a fraction of its fifth generation competitors. In a long conflict, or decades of policing, cost dictates reality. An Air Force burning its budget flies less, trains less, losing its edge. Lower costs allow Canadian pilots to fly nearly twice as many hours. When the merge happens, the pilot with more hours usually wins. Sweden's offer included a Gripen Center in Montreal, a hub for R&D. This becomes a global center of excellence for Arctic warfare technology. Canadian and Swedish engineers collaborate on sensors for Aurora Borealis. 
New anti-ship missiles optimized for the clutter of broken ice flows. Canada transitions from consumer to innovator, exporting solutions. I'm Art the Puncher says. This forces the United States to treat Canada with a new level of respect. And Currently, the dynamic is dependency, but with independence, Washington must negotiate. The continent's defense becomes a true partnership of professionals. However, this path would not be without its perils. We could anticipate trade disputes and diplomatic freezing out. The United States views the defense market as its sovereign territory. The Canadian government would need nerves of steel to withstand the pressure. But let us look at the hardware again. The Grip and Ease engine, the General Electric F414, is American. Canada already has supply chains for similar engine types. Risk mitigated. A hybrid of Swedish ingenuity and reliable American propulsion. Creating a platform that is truly the best of both worlds. The Wolfpack tactic is another element we must simulate. The Gripen E is designed to share data within its flight group covertly. One jet can track a target with radar, while the other three remain silent, receiving the data and moving into firing positions. They can switch roles dynamically. To an enemy, the source of the radar emission keeps moving, jumping from one coordinate to another, making it nearly impossible to secure a firing solution on the formation. In the vast, empty skies of the north, where ground-based radar coverage is spotty at best, this air-to-air... -air... Ultimately, this simulation reveals that the choice of a fighter jet is never just about the airframe. It is about the future trajectory of a nation. By choosing the Gripen, Canada would have chosen a path of self-reliance. They would have built an air force perfectly tailored to their geography, rugged, dispersed, and icy cold. Instead of being a junior partner operating a small wing of jets they cannot fully repair, they would be the leaders of a specialized Arctic warfare doctrine. They would possess a fleet that can land on a highway in the Northwest Territories, refuel from a truck, and launch again before the enemy satellite passes overhead. They would have secured the ultimate insurance policy, the ability to say no to a superpower and still defend their skies. The Gripen E offer was a glimpse into a future where Western air power is diverse, competitive, and resilient. It was a proposal to shatter the monoculture of defense procurement. In our reality, that offer was declined. But in the strategic simulation we have run today, the results are clear. The combination of Swedish engineering and Canadian geography would have created a fortress in the north, a defensive shield that would... The skies over the Arctic are getting darker and more crowded. Whether the decision to turn down this capability was the right one remains a subject of intense debate among experts. But one thing is certain. The physics of the Arctic do not care about political alliances. They only care about what works when the temperature drops, the runway is bombed, and the enemy is on the horizon. This has been a strategic deep dive into the road not taken. We analyze these scenarios not to dwell on the past, but to sharpen our minds for the conflicts of the future. The landscape of military aviation is changing, 
and the decisions made today will determine who controls the skies tomorrow. If you enjoyed this high-level analysis of military strategy and engineering, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to Airdom.